When you get a script and you know it's from Wes Anderson, what are your first thoughts? Um, I was just excited to see what the world is gonna be. Yeah. Um, and I had a little bit of sort of knowledge going into it, like it's this kind of, you know, 19, late 1950s, um, sort of Area 51 kind of vibe, but it was, when the script is, obviously if you've seen the film, it's a very much more complex version of that. Same, you know, it, it is like a, I think as a, I'm a fan of Wes's movies, and so I think it's um, just like as a fan when, to get the script before anything else, I'm just excited to see where he's at. Do you know like, kind of what he's thinking about, or just like if you went over to some a friend of yours' house and you saw like a book on their table, and you were like, I wonder what book that is? What do they read it? Like the you know you learn about people through what they're spending their time doing. And so the script is like such an ultimate version of that, at least in Wes's case. So it's like, where is his brain at? Where is he, what is he interested in? Ah, oh, aliens. You know, that kind of thing. It's, so it's fun to, to do it as a fan. So when you arrive on set and you see where his brain is at, and you see what the set looks like, how much of it, of it is like built and how much of it is like green screen? Because it looks incredible. No, it's all practical. None he is green screen. He doesn't use any green screen, um, which is, it, like even after, even if you, even if the background, like at one point, I remember we were inside the crater, like part of the yeah. wall behind us had to be right. green That's because right. of the size of like the scope of how big right. the piece was. It didn't fit inside the stage where it, you know, it was like taller and wider. Right. But then when they made it later on, they paint, they hand paint, they make miniatures of that stuff and shoot that. It's never like computer generated. Yeah which seems, especially coming from Marvel world to me to be, you know, I remember t talking to our editor and I s mentioned something about VFX and he was so offended. <laughs> he was like, we, we don't do that stuff. I said, really, but it seems like it would be much more efficient. He was like, don't use that word. <laughs> really? <laughs> we never, yeah, everything is, is practical. It's all like miniatures and puppets and all like hand painted in and stuff. It's just, it's so neat. It's so cool. It's remarkable. It is remarkable. It's a rare, when else? You it doesn't have to be like that, you know, it's, yeah. it's purposeful. I also just love, to be honest, like um, there's so many people, craftspeople and, and people who are artists who specialize in things like that this movie calls for, making miniatures and making a fake mountain. I mean, that's a hard thing to do, but there's someone who's really good at it. And they have five friends that will help them. And. Um, I like, that's my favorite thing of being on the movies, you know, everyone just doing their thing. What are they making over there? What are they, this person's polishing this, this person. Just every, the attention to detail that nothing is gonna be filled in later. It all has to be there on the day. It's kind of cool. It's gonna be some And there was running water that. and electricity and stuff there. Yeah, that's gotta be, that's yeah. gotta be like a really cool, yeah. man, we should do like a day in the life of like a Wes Anderson film one what day. What's so cool about this set is that it was built, you know, over, like agricultural field. So everywhere around us would be, you know, they'd be growing like soy and lettuces and whatever else. And then you would drive up and see this walled plot yeah. and all of that was, and all the dirt and everything and the dust, whatever had all been brought in. Mm -hmm. And all the whole set was all this forced perspective. So yeah, you would like yes. walk down the road and the That's cactus right. would get like smaller and smaller as you walked to the end. I mean, it was, it was incredible. It was so, it was fully immersive was so cool. Now you mentioned Marvel. Have you guys ever talked about the fact, I mean, I'm sure you have, that you both are in the Marvel universe and then now the Wes Anderson universe. Really. No, you haven't? I just assume everybody at a table, if there's a whole bunch of actors that like at least 85% of them have been in the Marvel no. universe. No, no, no. How's your experience? Been? Mine's a little different, I guess. Mine's <laughs> different, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, well, you feel like that. <laughs> now, Jason, I feel like your character is like the heart and soul of this film, I feel like. Do you agree? Okay. And if not, could you tell me a little bit about, you know, your character in the, the movie? Well, uh, I don't know. I think they're all sort of, I think it's like one big heart and one big soul that's all sharded off into little pieces and we're all sort of playing a version of this one thing, trying to get back to this one thing. But um, my character is certainly, he's a war photographer um, and, um, I think there's something just about a photographer, like, you know, there's a book, I'm a camera, but just the idea of observing 
it's you know it's a good uh, it's a good it's a good character to have in a movie with all of these wild people and an alien making a historic landing a person who's kind of unfazed by everything because he's been in so many traumatizing crazy experiences um, but he's also going through his own he's been in all these wars but he's also going through a thing because his wife has passed away and he's got four children um, and so he's kind of like right at this moment where he's gonna have to figure out he's either gonna become emerge as a really do the right thing as a father or not after this now Scarlett I heard that you approached your character with Betty Davis in mind how was it like to be a film star, but then you're playing a film star, but also from a certain era. Any differences in the character you're playing and your personality? I'm sure there are, I but. Hope, I hope so. <laughs> I think so, please, since I play, I think like a sociopath a little bit of this, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think, firstly, when I talked to Wes about it, it was it was really understanding what, what are the, you know, who, where did this, per, is this person studied? Are they, is this like an actor that you imagine you know, go at it. And where this is the Mercedes Ford character who plays Mitch Campbell. So she, you know, is she, is she an actor studio mm -hmm. person? Is her, what's her theater experience been? How is she regarded? Um, and, and with Mitch Campbell, it's like, what kind of a movie star is this? Where is she in her career? How does she speak? Um, where is she from? How was she discovered? You know, all of that stuff to try to understand kind of how Mercedes, the actor I play in, in our theater troupe, would approach the actress she's playing in the in the play. It's, it's great. With it's many layers. Into the next, into the next. <laughs> but I feel like that that kind of makes up Wes Anderson's films. It's like they're very layered. And some people are saying that this is maybe his greatest film to date. Do you agree? Or do you have a favorite Wes Anderson film? Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I can't, I mean, I love this movie because I just love, I love watching every person in it doing all of this work that I just think is so, um, subtle and great. And everyone really like is a real handoff of, you know, just when you, with these characters, you go to these characters, these, it just, it's kind of like a, it's exciting as a fan of acting and movies. Um, so I I would say it's my favorite other but I my other I guess favorite would be uh, Life Aquatic, just you know. What do you think, Scarlett? Um, I think what I love about this film is that it's really to me represents where Wes is at in his career in his mm -hmm. life. Um, it feels like a mature movie, um, I think, and it's it's. I think even as he, I, I, the second time that I saw it, because I think you kind of need to see it a, a couple time, a few times to let it all soak in. But when I saw it the last time, I really felt such anxiety towards the back end of the movie that I didn't have the first time. It just felt there was this kind of, I don't know, sort of racy feeling that was almost, I think a kind of like existential panic mm -hmm. mm. that you have, I think in certain phases of your life. And I don't know, I I, I, liked, I liked that feeling. I, I don't know, it was just felt, it felt sort of like lived in to me. Um, and I, I think, um, I love Darjeeling. I, I love that film. I love the environment of it. I love the, I like the, the pacing of it and, um, you know, I, I love the, I love where it takes you. I think it feels like a whole other world and place. And it's so beautiful, that that movie. Uh, I love the characters in it also. So, but um, but yeah, I, I'm very happy to be a part of this film and its complexity.